welcome to Food Tube Live, everybody. We've got a great show. This is the fourth live show this year and the last of the year. And of course, we've got Christmas and Thanksgiving just around the corner. So today, it's all about the take turkey. So sit back, strap in and relax and enjoy the show. Okay, 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 so lovely people. Um, you know, it is that time of year, certainly in Britain. I know we're global on, on Food Tube, uh, but the weather is starting to close in. And we want to celebrate the turkey tonight. So we've got unbelievable Food Tube talent here and with us to cook every little single part of that beautiful little poultry. So, first up, and dressed like a turkey, is the only one that is Genoa Contaldo. <laughs> What more can I say? Okay, so Gennaro, um, looking great. Uh, I'm presuming you're gonna do something Italian today. Yes. And, and what are you gonna cook for Food Tube? I'm gonna cook turkey milanese, fantastic with the cheese and then prosciutto, then on a fried eggs, and you know what? With a lovely shave of a truffle on top. You will enjoy it! <laughs> Yes, 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 it's right, because that is my favourite dish on the James Italian menu, and Gennaro yes. is going to cook it. OK, so from Gennaro Contaldo to the one and only Barbecue King, it is DJ Barbecue, everyone. Yeah. Um, so, Jamie. dude, what's going on, man? Barbecue turkey legs, bro, dog. Mm -hmm. Are you going to glaze it? I'm going to put a barbecue sauce at the end, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, obviously, we got fire and smoke. Yeah. So, you're going to be 500 metres up the road. I'm going to be freezing my butt off, yeah. But, you know, okay. it's all about live fire for me, so I got to go, bro. Okay, mate, you crack on, brother. Right, you, thank you, DJ Barbecue. <laughs> oh, yes. We'll go back to him in just a little bit. And then there's Kerry Ann. You are absolutely cleaning up on Food Tube at the moment with your Hello. family cooking. Yes, you are. Try my best. So, we are going to cook together. Yes. And we are doing a cook-along. So for the people in the UK, uh, we have had a fantastic little cook-along organised uh, by all the guys at Uncle Ben's. Uh, we've had the recipes in the sun. We've had stuff on pack. So for all of you guys that have done that and got the ingredients, we're going to come back to you in not too much time, and we're both going to cook along with these guys. So th thank you. Massive thank you to the Uncle Ben's guys that are here tonight. Um, so that's very exciting. Thank you very much, Kerry Ann. I'll see you in just a little bit. Now, um, we've got more and more in the show today. Uh, do you remember, by any chance, this, this little thing here? Yes. Do you remember this? I know it looks probably ruder than you think it is. Uh, um, so, to, now, now, come on. This is the turkey twizzler, everyone. Um, and absolutely, this was one of the things that I discovered on the School Food Dinners campaign. Uh, and um, it kind of got a bit controversial. And ever since the moment they kind of came out of schools, all of the youth of Britain have hated me on Twitter and Facebook. There's 20,000 people on Facebook that love these things and hate me. So, boys and girls, we're going to have a battle. The battle of the Twizzler. Yes, but you'll see that a little bit later. Until then, we have a little YouTube sort of phenomena, which is Michael from Vsauce, everyone. <laughs> so, look, um, I mean, look, my subscribers on FooTube, um, you know, we're nearly at 500,000. Woo! Yeah. 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 Thank you, Michael. Uh, 500,000. Yeah! yeah! That's just to make me feel better because Michael, you're in what, five and a half million subscribers? Almost. So he's a pro, man. He's the dude. Um, so look, for, for the people that might not know Vsauce, tell them what your channel's all about. Vsauce is about how amazing the universe is. Everything, if you look closely enough, is phenomenal. Let's talk about food, which is what we're going to be doing today, the banana. Okay. It looks tame. It looks safe. Bananas are one of the most radioactive foods we eat. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah. When it comes to potassium on Earth, a pretty big ratio of those potassium atoms are radioactive isotopes. Get a good source of potassium around you, eat 200 of these. 200 bananas is the equivalent of one chest x-ray. Oh my God. And I'll tell you what, if you go onto to Vsauce, subscribe to it, it's a fantastic channel. Uh, but he, you answer the sort of unanswered, well, the unasked questions. I love that one, which is, if all the humans in the world jumped at the same time on the planet, what would happen? Yeah, and it turns out not much. Okay. But that's, but that's okay. 
we can do other things as humans. We just can't move the earth much. Okay. Well, look, um, you very kindly, we've done some nice little collaborations that are coming out later on in the year, but you very kindly are heading up uh, the question. In the last couple of weeks, uh, I've asked you guys on Twitter, Facebook, to send in those kind of incredible foodie questions, those incredible foodie facts. Uh, and, and have they sent in lots of stuff? We have a bunch of stuff, and we are vetting the facts, we're putting them into perspective, and you can send in more right now. Okay, so what do the guys have to do if they've got a kind of a question on food, or they want to give us a fact about food? Perfect. Send them through Twitter to at Jamie's Food Tube with the hashtag Food Tube, and we will be sharing them throughout the day. Mm-hmm, baby. Okay, and we've got James here, who's the editor of jamielove.com. Uh, <laughs> These guys are going to be sourcing all your questions. Now, let's, should we get cooking, everyone? Yeah. Come, come over here. There's a little friend of, there's a little friend of mine, uh, uh, Mr. Hugh Fernley Whittingstall. Yeah. Hey. Hello. It's, it's lovely to have you on the, on, on the channel today. It's great to be on the channel. So Fantastic. It's nearly Christmas. Very nearly. Someone's already had their Christmas day. Um, well, look, I, I did say it's all about the turkey today, and I wanted to start the show upside down. So I've got... You know, does this remind you of anything? This is kind of the day after Christmas, uh, the day after, day. yeah, Boxing Day or Thanksgiving for the people in America. Um, and I want to do something incredible, something amazing with those leftovers that don't look quite so beautiful. So Hugh, if you wouldn't mind pulling some of that brown meat off, I um, will. that would be fantastic. Um, so guys, um, what I want to do is show you lovely people um, how to make a beautiful salad, uh, if I can light my gas stove. Um, oh, there it is. We have light. That one's good. Um, I have kind of developed, uh, th this is a kind of new dressing for me. So I'm thinking winter leaves. So for winter leaves, uh, in this lovely bag here, I've got a watercress that goes in here, a lovely irony rich uh, green leaf there. I've got some rocket. Uh, if you've got any chicory or anything like that, that mm. would be wonderful. Um, I'm a massive fan on chicory. Um, the red and the white chicory here. Do you like chicory, Hugh? I love it. I love that bitter sweet taste you get and the crunch. It's fantastic. Absolutely gorgeous. So you can get these in all the supermarkets. Um, and I'm just going to take the end off. What I do is cut it in half, actually. Cut the chicory in half. Mm. Then you get these beautiful little cups. Have a look at that. These are like little beautiful. They're sort of so juicy. They're a little bit bitter, but bear with me on that. And so juicy. Very good. Uh, they've got wonderful stretch. This stalk here, don't throw that away, OK? I just want to finally. Cut that in half and then finely slice that. Ooh. And that gives you the most fantastic, um, just have a little look at that, a really beautiful, dense um, part of the, it's slightly different flavour. Mm. So we'll put that in. Um, Hugh, if you could pull your turkey, my darling, into got, this I've got pan here. a mixture of breast meat and the dark meat. Yeah, again, if we, we to sizzle that up, that's like a frazzly topping. Yeah, if we can get some power. That one's good. Okay. Though. So the idea is... Do I drop of oil in there just to get yeah, this... Yeah, that would be good. lovely. So, um, Hugh, I'm sure, like the people watching today, we kind of go back to the turkey the day after, cooking the whole bird. But, but those leftover dishes are the best, aren't they? I mean, that, that I look forward to them almost as much as the big day. What are the things that you love to do with leftover turkey? Well, my mum always used to make fabulous turkey rissoles. And she just put loads, put a little bit of minced bacon in there as well, just to give a little bit of richness and, and I know lots of seasonings. Awful. Can you remind me what rissol, rissoles well, are? Well, it's kind of like a, like a burger, really, a like a little patty, you right. know, bound together with a bit of beaten egg, uh, rolled in flour, very, very crispy, served with a leftover cranberry sauce. Really, really delicious. Beautiful. This dressing of yours, Jamie, that's a hot thing, isn't it? That, that's based on a yeah. re reduction well, of... It is. What I wanted to do, Hugh... Um, and this is an interesting dressing, guys. Um, I wanted to do like a, a new expression of a warm salad. So we've got all these kind of more wintry, bitter leaves. I mean, just look at this platter right now. The colours, everything like that. Um, we can strip cabbage in, uh, cabbage or um, uh, finely sliced Brussels in there, Brussels sprouts, mm, nice. or carrot or fennel. Uh, but the dressing is phenomenal. So um, if you could put a bit of oil in there for me, Hugh, that would be amazing. Yep. Uh, I've got a shallot here. You could use an onion. Simply peel it. Half it. I'm going to finally slice it, and I'm going to do this amazing um, sort of hot, sort of, sort of, I guess, citrus dressing. It is really simple to do, um, and the flavours are just jammy. I, I call it lady marmalade dressing. So you're almost caramelising and confiting the, the the shallot, getting it really sweet. Absolutely. So obviously those it's going quite fast there. That so is a little bit fast, but I'm sure your tossing will. 
will slow it down a little bit. I'm sure um, it will. We can have a little a pinch of salt yeah. goes in as well. And then you've got some of these lovely Christmas mandarins or clementines or tangerines or satsumas. What do you call them? Well, I call them clementines. Clementines. But they're kind of all the same family. They always used to be satsumas um, when I was a boy, but they've somehow become clementines, haven't they? So look at these juicy little fellas. Um, for me personally, like, there's mm. no sort of fa flavour that sums up this time of the year than clementines. So once you've just softened these shallots just a little bit. down a little bit more. Um, and, and, and really, just an extra minute and slow it down a bit is, is kind of perfect. But we'll, we'll get away with it. This is, this is Food Tube Live. We can get away with stuff. Well, one of the things I love about these, it's not just the juiciness of the fruit or the yeah. segment. It's the essential oil, the aroma that comes when you slice From it the in the skin. Just yeah. smell that. It's I mean, that is Christmas, isn't it? It is. And actually, what you can that do... That and cloves, that's the smell of Christmas well, what, for me. Well, what, what you can do is just get yourself one of these uh, little fine graters. And these are phenomenal. For ah, getting just that's going to give it a real lift, isn't it? That, that, I love that. You're putting a little bit of... I mean, that's that's coming straight off the pan. Absolutely. So now we've got a little bit of colour on those shallots. So I'm going to squeeze... the juice goes in. I'm going to squeeze the juice in. Time to get my turkey sizzling as well, I think. Um, and what I'm going to do, that juice is going to reduce. And you wouldn't believe how quickly that's going to go to a sort of syrup. I think people forget how much sugar is in fruit. So I'm just going to add that in on a high heat. I'm going to keep my eye on it. Now, Hughes, you know, the thing is, when, when cold meat kind of goes cold, it solidifies, it looks less attractive. And all I want to do is get it crispy and yeah. sizzling. So just a few minutes of kind of sizzling. That noise, that's That perfect. pop, is, that's a, like a Christmas cracker going off, isn't it? There's actually a little bit of turkey popping in the heat. And, of course, leftovers. I mean, this is something that we've got to really embrace again. I mean... I think the interesting thing about Thanksgiving and Christmas is this is the one time in the year where most of the country, most of the world, well, certainly most of the world that partake in those celebrations are cooking whole birds. That's it. Big the ones. Turkey. Usually too big for the family and there will be leftovers. And I think people are a bit more conscientious about leftovers at Christmas. But at other times of the year, we do tend to throw a bit too much away, don't we? The, statistic, well, for, the statistics are 40% of everything that we buy well, that's bonkers, isn't goes it? in the bin. Ah! So look, while this, not is today, just, none of it. while this is all cooking off, um, I want to embellish this. I guess I want to kind of talk to these guys about the salad as a principle. Mm. So we've got this kind of reduced sort of clementine dressing that I'll show you how to finish. It's very simple. We've got random mixed lovely winter greens uh, and, and salad here. The turkey's getting crispy. Over here is Hughes nuts. <laughs> now, they are beautiful. Um, <laughs> There's lots and of them and they're very small. We've got um, hazelnuts. Use any seeds, any nuts. So I'm going to bash um, a few of them And he's up. just, he's just going to crack them in a pestle and mortar. Hazel I don't know if you can see it almonds. there. And that's just a texture thing. And we're going to get them toasting with the turkey. That's going to be another extra flavour. Absolutely. And now, those are dried cherries going in, or are they dried well, these, cranberries? These actually are sour, sour um, cranberries. And you can get them mm. in bags in all the supermarkets. And actually, the heat from the pan and the nuts, it's all going to kind of make those cranberries really chewy and delicious. And ultimately, our job is to make uh, this salad an awesome, proper, proper salad. I think people often forget how exciting a salad can be. It says, tends to be a, a word that doesn't always enthuse people, but at this time of year... Oh, um, and also, so after all that heavy with. food, it's, it's, a, it's a little Ooh. relief. Just a teaspoon of honey. Lovely. And if you look in the pan now, just come and have a look at this. Have a look in this pan. Can you see it's starting to catch around the edge here? Now we take it off the heat. We turn that off. Um, I'm going to put in some quality vinegar. Right, about two tablespoons of vinegar goes in. There's so a sweet and sour thing going on there sweet, as well, isn't there? Sweet, sour. We've got um, that lovely cutting of the, of the nice vinegar in there as well. If you've got two tablespoons of vinegar in there, we'll go four tablespoons of quality extra virgin olive oil. Just have a look in that pan. That's what we're Beautiful. looking for. So you've built that you've built that reduction back up into a loose dressing now. Yes. So there's more enough of it to really go over Abs the leaves and everything. Absolutely. And once this has got nice and crispy... I think we're getting there. We are getting there. We want to get it really, yeah. really golden yeah. and um, get it nice. Now, just while that finishes off, Hugh Fernley Whittenstall, guys, I mean, we all love him, don't we? I mean, we've watched his shows. We've seen him do all those beautiful things. I've been a big fan for a long, long time before I had the chance to meet him. But, you know, sometimes I was a little bit mean to you. Um, and <laughs> what oh, can yeah. I say? Well, the thing is... He hasn't always had... I mean, look at him now. He's beautiful, smart. You know, he's cleaned himself up. Scrubbed up but, for um, the occasion. But, um, Christmas haircut. Well, the thing, the thing is, um, uh, his hair wasn't always quite so good. <laughs> Hang on. 
That's you, mate. Oh, no. <laughs> Thank you. So as, so as we can see, his hair wasn't always... He looks like the love child of the whole of Duran Duran. <laughs> Come on, I think uh, that, surely that's worse. We were quite slick until then. Do you know what I mean? There you go, that's food too. But um, no, you look good, brother. But I have to say, I think I look much, much worse. Very, very Little scary. Little Christmas kiss under the mistletoe. Um, yeah, thank you very much, Hugh. Um, uh, have we got any food facts while we're just caramelising this beautiful we turkey? Saw, we, we took our eye off the turkey and now it's got lovely and crispy. Any food facts, guys? Yeah, we sure do. So this one just came in from Jimmy at Way Too Dusty Death. But it's a fun fact, kind of. And I've always wondered this myself. He says, if you only ate rabbit, you would die. But you can survive on honey alone. Now, hold on, Jimmy. I've always wondered this. I've always wanted to be like a dog. You know, dogs can just eat dog food, like, and that's it? What's the one food a human can eat? He says honey. We're not convinced. I've heard it's the milk of a human. Really? Could we survive our whole lives on our, on our mother's milk? Yeah. Could we? I tried as long as I could, but <laughs> eventually... <laughs> could, we, could we make cheese with it to make it more interesting? Oh, and yeah, butter people make and ice cream out of it. Ice cream, just to get, keep, it, keep the variety going. Could we have it on strawberries? That would be cheating, wouldn't it? You could have it and only it and live the rest of your life on only that. Interesting. Well, look, I think it's time to... Should we bring this beautiful warm salad together? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. so, guys, you've seen this new lady marmalade dressing. It really is quite delightful. And he's not you just know, saying that, it really it's, is. It's really, really good. I just love give that it a little sweet. shake. I'm going to put that over mm. the salad. It's a warm salad. So the point is you get your friends, you get your guests around the table now. As you know, when you dress salad leaves, it starts to sort of die straight away. So I'm going to spread that beautiful salad in and around the platter. I'm just going to go in and grab a wodge of that crispy turkey. Look at that. And we've got the nuts and the cranberries in there as well. And, and there's a little finale, isn't there? There is a finale because I like the little fight between uh, fresh and some sweet and sour. So we're going to just cut some pomegranates in half. And what I love to do is just get some really beautiful yoghurt, some nice little yoghurt, and just put a few little bits of relief around there Ooh. like that. And then get some beautiful pomegranates and just a nice spanking spoon. And hold your fingers like that and just... Get those beautiful capsules of sweetness over the plate. And that, my friends, will be an incredible salad that you won't get bored of for this season of year. So there you go, guys. Beautiful. The first recipe. Like little Christmas baubles, aren't they? They are beautiful. Whoa. So, guys, uh, cooking. <laughs> so there's the first recipe, using up those leftover bits of turkey. Uh, we're cooking next uh, with the Uncle Ben's cook-along. But before then, we're going to go down the street to the one and only DJ Barbecue. What are you doing, DJ Barbecue? Hey, Jimmy. Oh, man. Yeah, hey, uh, they're enjoying a nice kind of warm kitchen. But we're outdoors because we cook on a live fire. What's up? It is DJ Barbecue, and I'm at Food Tube Street to cook up one of my favorite parts of the turkey, the legs, man. They're, it's lean meat. It's where all the flavor is, man. So come over here. Watch the cables, dude. Oh, man, you're going to trip up. There we go. All right. I feel I'm, like I'm in a Michael Jackson video, you know, screw, smooth criminal. Bum, bum, bada, bum, bum, bada, bum, bum, bada, bum, 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 bum. Yeah, I need to be a bit more. Okay, so here we go. We're going to do the turkey. Now, you can do the same recipe on chicken. We just want to be a bit more bigger. We want to be a bit more feral, like you're a Viking and you're sitting on a big, like, long table and you got that big old turkey leg right there. You don't even need any utensils, man. Screw that. Okay, now, turkey does have its problems, man. Sometimes it can be a bit dry, but we're gonna goop proof that. We're gonna make sure it stays nice and moist. We're gonna kind of troubleshoot it with a brine. So with all these flavors we're gonna use in the dry rub, we've already done it. So over here, we've got a beautiful brine. These legs have been going for about a good five hours. Now, to make the rub, come over here. Here we go. So, we're thinking seasonal flavors, okay? You know, Thanksgiving, Christmas, all these kind of holidays. So, star anise, we're gonna smash up a couple of these bad boys. Get them in there for our rub. Yes, yeah, star anise, get back in there. You bad, bad star anise. Now, cloves. That's what you smell like. You got them on the Christmas ham. You got them on your oranges. They use as room fresheners, which I always found kind of weird. So, we gotta get the cloves in there. Yes, cloves. Bad, bad cloves. Yes, I'm on a search and destroy mission on the cloves. Woo! Okay, now. We add a tablespoon of brown sugar. Then we add a teaspoon of cinnamon. 
and then a teaspoon of cracked pepper right there. And one of my favorite things to work with, my dry rubs, onion granules or onion powder, depending on what country you're in. Sometimes you can't get the granules or the powder in certain countries. And a tablespoon of like sea salt. And my favorite part of this whole thing, I love cooking with dry like lemon zest and orange zest. We're doing clementines. Now, when you go to down for Christmas and you got your stocking right there, you got all those clementines like filling up your stocking. And you're thinking, man, that's like taking a valuable toy space but it is the smell of like the holidays. It smells like kids like kind of breakfast cereal. I used to get all kind of jazzed up on when it was all like too much sugar. Okay, here we go. So we're gonna go with a teaspoon of that. Now there's the ingredients in our rub, our beautiful kind of seasonal rub. So we're gonna mash it all up. Oh, look at these beautiful flavors. Get in here, man. That just smells of Christmas. That just smells of stockings and Christmas presents and mama's turkey. Okay, so now we're gonna add that to our legs. So the thing is, you wanna take out these legs and you wanna pat them dry because we just wanna get these things to nicely stay on there. We don't wanna add any olive oil. We're just gonna go with a nice dry rub. And if you have the water, if the brine's still there, it's gonna kind of come off. So we're gonna rub the turkey legs. Okay, there they go. Now, let's get our legs over to the barbecue. We're gonna cook these things slow and low. I'm all about that, man. We're gonna cook these things for about three hours at 250 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, about 120, 125 on the Celsius range. I think that's it, man. It was to my knowledge there'd be no math involved. And then I'm gonna add a bit of the smoke flavor. So I've got some cherry wood chips. They've been sitting in the water. I'm gonna throw them all in my charcoal, get some on over here, give them a bit of love. Come on, dudes. There we go. Now, I'm gonna cover them up, and I'm gonna bring the smoke and the sweet smoke flavor. Nice. Okay. My mom is from Virginia Beach, Virginia. She loved making spoon breads and cornbreads and all sorts of lovely sides to go with your meat. And this is one of the best, cornbread. But I like spicy stuff, so I added some jalapenos and the second best invention in the world after spandex and women, cheese. That, we're gonna put those bad boys on that barbecue over there. How good does that look? Come on, round of applause. My mama's cornbread. A vec, a vexy. Jamie, you're not the only one with a crowd, man. I got a crowd out here too. Thank you for braving the cold, I just appreciate it. Okay, so let's get a couple of these beauties onto our barbecue. Now listen, right now, if you want to pretend you're, you're in church or you're an angel singing, here's the time to do it. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, there's our beautiful four turkey legs. They've been going already. Let me get a bit more. Because there's a lot of people in that room. They're all going to want to eat some cornbread. Okay, here we go. So we're not done yet, man, because we've got DB, DJ barbecue sauce from Planet Dam. So we're going to add a bit of that for the kind of last little bit. We're gonna throw them on there. Now, if you wanna know how to make DJ Barbecue Sauce from Planet Dam, all you gotta do is check it out on my channel, DJ Barbecue Sauce on FoodTube. Subscribe, it is free, it is rad. Is that the cops, man? They're coming to get us. <laughs> sorry, dude, I'll turn off the lights in a bit, man. I'm sorry for any problems, Ossifer. Okay, we better get out of here and bring the food. Okay, so there's our turkey legs and our cornbread, so boom. How good does that look? It just looks of awesomeness, and it's gonna taste even better. So there's our turkey legs, and let's get the cornbread. It's had a little bit of a toast on there. Nice. All right, one, three more, and you know what? It'd be rude if I didn't taste my creation, so let me just have a little quick taste before I bring it to the crew up there. Excuse me, Rub. Excuse me, DJ Barbecue Sauce from Planet Dam and excuse me, legs in the brine. So let me just get in here. Oh, this looks so good. Oh, look at the color. You can see the smoke color coming through on that meat. Man, they're gonna love this. That is perfect. All right, come on. It's so moist. Let's go. Come with me. Woo! We've gotta go bring this lovely food. Inside to Jamie, man, I gotta impress you, man, because I'm wanting him to sign a book, man. Let's go, come on, let's do this. <laughs> go, 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 go. 
And there is only one DJ barbecue in the house. Okay, so here at FoodTube, for me personally, the whole point of setting up the channel was all about finding new talent. New talent around the world, not just in Britain. So, the last time we did a live show uh, in this very place, we kicked off a new competition with the lovely help from our sponsors, Uncle Ben's. So we had the search for a food tube talent with Uncle Ben's, and we had hundreds and hundreds of videos sent from all over the world. The top five were from Germany, from France, from China and New Zealand. We had someone from America, and the winner who you chose was a beautiful girl called Felicitas from Argentina. Yeah! There she is. What a lovely, love. How are you, Felicitas? You okay? Super happy. Oh, it, guys, how brilliant was her video? It was absolutely amazing. Um, Felicitas, obviously this was exciting. You know, uh, we've never met before. Your video, your passion, your cooking, you know, it traveled across the world. You won the competition. How was it for you? What's happened? Like a big, very big surprise, like a gift. It is amazing. I, I think I'm dreaming every day. I'm super happy, and I thank I thank everybody, um, all the people that voted. I thank you. And okay, my English is not so good, but uh, I'm super happy. <laughs> Woo! Uh, listen. No, your, your English is much better than my Spanish, my darling. But, um, darling, you know, I'm, I'm really excited. Um, I think people all around the world, certainly in Britain as well, we want to learn more about the food in Argentina. Uh, can you tell us a little bit? Because right now you're filming videos for FoodTube, aren't you? Oh, yes. I have been filming some videos, beautiful Argentine landscapes from the city, from the countryside, and plan to do more, uh, mar much more of those. Uh, with Argentine uh, food, of course. What, what, what kind, so, so tell us, what kind of, uh, what kind of food uh, will you be cooking? Argentine empanadas. Beautiful. Yeah. They are great, spicy, juicy. Then I will be making some uh, pizzas, but on the barbecue. Wow, look that, at that, this, That's very typical for young people here in the country, in Argentina. And then I will be making a uh, braised uh, pork bondola. bondola. Beautiful. Mm. I love yeah. it. I love it. I can't wait. I can't wait to see no? your cooking. Um, so, Felicitas, um, um, we're going to, I think we're <laughs> over and out now. I think we're out of it. But it was lovely to talk to you. She's frozen. Oh, she's back. She's back. Yay! She's back. Um, okay, darling. Well, look, Felicitas. Uh, from everyone in England, for everyone in FoodTube, lots of love. We give you a kiss and lots of love. Take care. There you go, guys. Yeah. The lovely Felicitas from Argentina. Okay, really, really exciting. That's why I love FoodTube, because the way that she dealt with her video and got the whole country behind her, not just in Argentina, but all around the world, it was so, so exciting. So let's do this dish. Now, I wanted to do a little dish um, to sort of really big up leftovers of turkey. Of course you can use chicken, or actually you can use any meat in this dish as well. Uh, I'm gonna be doing a little quick dish, uh, like a Cajun style burrito. People love burritos at the moment. So this is just a little expression of how to do it. Uh, and we're gonna cook it all along. So all you guys that have got stuff at home, uh, get ready, get your stuff ready to go. Carrie ann you're gonna come out and give us a hand. Oh, yeah. Now Carrie ann uh, <laughs> Carrie Ann's been doing some great videos uh, on FoodTube. Uh, you've been having a really good time, haven't you, darling? I have. I've been having a time of my life, son. So uh, you've been concentrating on family classics. Yes. Uh, you've had great response from FoodTube. They seem to like it, yeah. It seems yeah. to be going down well. So we're cooking this together. Let's. So if you can chop up, uh, for this dish, guys, we're going to use two cloves of garlic, uh, roughly one chilli, uh, a couple of sticks of celery, uh, and a few bits of spring onions. This is kind of like the holy trinity along with the pepper. For the pepper, just put your thumb in there, pop it out, pull out the seeds, and then just tear that open like this, and we're going to slice it up. Now, Kerry ann if you can just slice into one centimetre dice, roughly, uh, the celery, the onions, finely slice the chilli and the garlic and the peppers, while 
I start cooking. Now, guys, um, you can chop away. We're going to be cooking together with many, many people. In the papers in the UK, uh, they've had recipes in newspapers. Uh, we've had stuff on the packets. Uh, Uncle Ben's here uh, have had my ugly mug on the packet here. Uh, and the point of doing, this is a, a brown rice, a whole grain uh, brown rice. This is already cooked, OK? And when you're doing a sort of stir-fried rice dish, uh, it's always important to have the rice cold, OK? Uh, or even like any Asian rice dish, okay? So we've got cold rice cooked uh, over there. Kerry Ann's doing a nice job of chopping stuff up there. Um, so in this pan, we're going to add, I'm sort of taking inspiration from sort of Cajun flavours, just a few Cajun flavours. So they call the Holy Trinity the peppers, the onions, the celery. So in a pan, we're going to add just a little olive oil, and we're going to go in with those peppers, and we just want to just get some softness happening right there. We'll be tossing that up, and uh, the celery as well, we're just going to strip down the middle and cut into centimetre dice. So celery, I think, often is sort of underloved in this country, but it does. It's the basis of so many dishes around the world, uh, and people absolutely love it. So often in Britain, we just put it with a cheese board, and that's a little bit boring. But the celery can go in there, straight and in there. Negative. Oh, yes. Yes, you're right. Me and Kerry Ann, as you can see, we eat a lot of celery because yes. it is... It is yeah. calorie negative. Yeah. Oh, yes. Um, OK, so if you can just speed up there, sweet pea. I'll take the onions. Um, so you can see, you can hear it all happening here. Um, we just want to soften that up. Um, now, um, Carrie Ann's going in with the garlic. Really important, I think, for getting that flavour happening. Um, and chilli. We like a little bit of heat. So I kind of look at this dish. This is particularly good just making it for two people. Um, but you can do this for four, of course. I'm just going to slice it up. Got spring onions here, just about four, one per person, and I'm going to throw that straight into the pan. Now, this, um, the product I'm using, of course, you can just get your rice and boil it, cook it according to the packet instructions, uh, then just put it in a sieve and put cold water over it and just let it sit for a while. Or, you know, the handy thing about buying these packets is um, it's already cooked, of course. It's wholemeal, so it's got nice sort of health-giving properties as well. Uh, and the great thing is it's already cold, okay? So I'm going to liven this rice up with these beautiful vegetables here. They call this the Holy Trinity. So if you wanted to, if you wanted to, um, you could just pep that up uh, with a little smoked paprika. That's very, very beautiful. We have a little bit of chili sauce, but I'm going to give that later. Carrie Ann is just going to hack up um, some coriander leaves. Now... Coriander, or cilantro, as they call it, um, in many other countries. Um, we're going to pick the leaves like that. We'll save that for later. And then we've got the stalks. Don't throw that away. We want to slice it up. So Carrie Ann's just sliced it up for me. If you can do a little bit more, that would be beautiful. So here we go. Everyone at home, if you're cooking along, then bless you. Hopefully we're not going too fast for you. We've got that veg in the pan doing beautiful things. I which would is love lovely. To see people's pictures if they're making this at home. What do you reckon? That so can I could send them in? Carrie Ann, she always does great things. Um, hashtag FoodTube. Uh, tag in a picture of you cooking uh, our beautiful dish here. That will be fantastic. Um, Carrie Ann, uh, have you made this dish before, or is this the first time for you? This is the first time for me, but I'm really excited because it's got all my favourite things. Well, people are loving burritos at the moment. So look, come in, come in here. Now we've sort of sort of softened off this veg. We do want to season it with a little sea salt a little pepper, and also we're going to go in with the rice. Now, as the rice comes out, we're going to just kind of squeeze it and separate it. And at the moment, this kind of rice, it's sort of, it's almost like dormant. It's waiting for something. So what I want to do is give it something beautiful. So again, we're going to go back to this little grater like this, and the lemon zest is going to give you wonderful fragrance and flavor. And then I'm just going to chop this bad boy in half, and the minute that this juice hits the pan, it will start to caramelise and it's going to rehydrate and soften up that rice absolutely beautifully. Although I have just, I have just chopped the most unjuicy lemon. <laughs> this is the most... Okay, can I have another lemon? Yeah. Roll it, roll it. See, okay. I've got a fun food fact. So okay, go for one. it. Roll it, roll it, roll it. And it pops all the little capsules inside and then you're supposed to get a bit more juice than you would normally. So let's, let's have a see. Let's see is right. <laughs> <laughs> These are rubbish lemons. What country did they come from? 
This one, probably. Oh, dear. So, blooming Italians again. Gennaro, they're your people. Not for the mouth, me for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Here, Ginny. We need more lemons. Oh. Okay. So, we got the lemons going in. Just the juice of one lemon, okay? The, for some reason, these were very unjuicy. I don't know why. Oh, but look, right. we're just going to toss it now. And that tossing action is really important. We're dressing that beautiful rice in those lovely, crunchy, but softened vegetables. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. So, we've done that bit. That's looking good, guys. That's looking good. Over here, on a low temperature, let's turn that down. Um, I want to get some leftover turkey. Remember, this is all about leftover turkey. So a little handful, a couple of hundred um, grams. This is your leftover turkey from Thanksgiving or Christmas. That goes in, and I'm going to add just two tablespoons of barbecue sauce. Now, the point of this dish, guys, two's fine, carry on, two's fine. Uh, well, you, you can add it later. See how it goes. Um, the point of this dish is that um, it's supposed to be easy, a nice little snack, a nice little lunch, something, you know, that you love. Something a bit naughty. So actually, there's, act there's a lot of veg in this dish, so we're good. Turkey's a nice lean meat. But by dressing it in the barbecue sauce, it does get a wonderful smoky, and it starts to caramelize as well, which is really, really good. So Carrie Ann is picking through that. We're going to keep stirring this. So look, we've got the rice, guys. OK? Nice and simple. Rice is done. Turn the heat off. Well, all I'm going to do now Actually, put my heat back on again. Um, as this um, beautiful turkey, you want, you want it to sort of, in the barbecue sauce, you've, of course, got all those mixtures of flavour, you know, honey, apple juice, you know, the smokiness, the That's kind of really ketchup. Nice. It is sort of undeniable. Terry ann was probably a little bit right. You know, maybe there is another little, just a little bit extra sauce going in there. Uh, you want to make it sticky and gorgeous. So as that happens, guys, um, if you can just clear a little bit of space there, my sweet, um, we're going to finish our little plate up. So we've got the rice done. Uh, we want a nice little platter to put it on, guys. Uh, the tortillas here, go for the large, just to make life easy. Um, just want to heat it up. So I'm literally just going to turn down this gas and just either pop it in the oven for a, sec a second. You don't want to, I don't want to toast it. Um, I literally just want to heat it through so it becomes nice and bendy, okay? So on it goes like that. Very, very nice. As soon as it gets bendy, happy days, it's sort of woken up that bread. We're going to go in with our lovely flavoured rice, and you get your opportunity to correct the seasoning if it needs it, just like that. You can see there's lots of lovely chunky veg in there. Kids love this dish. Do you reckon your kids would like this one? I reckon they would destroy this if I give them this. <laughs> I like that word, destroy. We're going to go in with the crispy caramelised turkey. A little bit of coriander over the top, sweetheart. And then, let me just wash my hands. What I wanted to do was just a tiny bit of feta cheese. Um, just, just grab a little, literally, that's that much from a height, sprinkle it over. So if you get a nice close-up of that now, we've got veg, we've got wholemeal rice, we've got sort of the turkey with attitude. Remember, guys, you can do this with any poultry. It's really, actually, any leftover meat is really, really good. And then what I want to do is just roll this up so I'm just going to take it up like that, pull it back, just like my granddad used to make his little cigarettes, not those kind of cigarettes, and roll it up, and there is our first beautiful little naughty burrito. You can go bigger if you want, but I think you want to get it in your gob. So I'm just going to put this here. I'm going to make one more. Um, I haven't quite finished it. If, we ju if I'm just going to put that there, um, I want to do a little bit of refreshment for this, okay? So what we're going to do is a little bit of yogurt and uh, some nice organic yogurt straight over here. Have a look at this, guys. Just a nice heat dessert spoon. And then this chili sauce. Try and get this chili sauce. It's absolutely brilliant. And I'm just going to put that. It's like heaven and hell. Chili sauce and yogurt, like heat, fire, and a fire extinguisher. And there we go. We're going to put that beautiful burrito just like that. I'll do one more. Finish it with some coriander. So, guys, there you go. The, f oh, the second dish is done. Wonderful, uh, beautiful burritos, Cajun style, with a little bit of help from Uncle Ben's. Thank you very much. <laughs>
very, very, very nice. OK, Michael, I think we're back over to you with some food facts. What's going on in your world? Yeah, Jamie, Carrion, that looks delicious, but I'm thinking, what about the cannibals? What do we have for them? Guess what? If you ate the average human body, that would be 115,000 calories. So pace yourself. That, that's average now or average 24, you know, 30 years ago? That's average now. Okay. But let's talk about real food. This comes from Roberto Canary at Rich Beyond Care. There is a Japanese delicacy consisting of raw chicken. Yes. I Can mean, you tell me more about this? Okay, so uh, uh, this, this goes for any poultry. Um, there's two things really that are a problem with raw poultry. That's Campylobacter and that's Salmonella. If you dry pluck them and if you don't take their stomachs out and leave it for three, four days and hang them, um, you know, uh, Salmonella's aerobic, so if, if there's no air, then that dies. Ah. And Campylobacter is really only from the wet plucking process. Okay, so if you've done those two things, and then if you're Japanese, and like the Germans, you're very diligent, and, and you do DNA tests, you can tell if there's anything in that chicken that's naughty. And then once they've got this incredible product, then they do do, and I've eaten, raw chicken sushi. How is it? Okay, um, I think uh, it, it was amazing. I, I ate a whole load of it, and I thought it was amazing. <laughs> I thought it was tuna. You know how they really value uh, toro, you know, the, the tuna belly. Um, I thought I was eating tuna because I was dipping it in sauces and this, that, and the other. So I wasn't really concentrating a few beers, or maybe quite a few beers. Um, but then they go, no, no, now that was all chicken. And I'm like, wow. Um, so I, I was a bit freaked out, but there you go. But you know what? This, this for you, is for you, my friend. So I'm going to take this. Actually, Mr. Cameraman, can you take this from me and go give that to Michael from Z Free Sauce? I think he deserves that beautiful me? dish. Wow. Oh, Thank yeah. Thank you. OK, Paul. So, lovely man. Um, so, uh, we've got to time. We've done a lovely salad. Uh, we've done the beautiful burritos with our friends from Uncle Ben's. Uh, now, uh, we are going to go over to the one and only Italian Stallion. This is kind of mafiosa and food mixed up into... By the way, he's out of his, uni he's out of his turkey outfit now. We've got the one and only Gennaro Gontaldo in the house! I was waiting, right, uh, what, it's all laughing, fantastic, I'm going to make this fantastic turkey milanese, so simple, so good, first, let me just start my guest right on, right, I got you a lovely turkey breast, which you bash it, if you can't do, ask your butcher, he will do it, once you bash it, you got this fantastic fillet, you can see, then, don't just let me just do everything. A little bit of salt. Just splash them a little bit. The other side as well. And oh, this one is cooking. Yes, yes, yes. Come on. <laughs> it's quick. Then the other side. Again, a little bit of salt. A little bit of peppery. Then goes inside the flour. Nice little bit of flour, so a couple of eggs, that's just some eggs. This is all from real. Season a little bit, salt and paper, and it's fantastic. Beat it. Yes. Then you get inside. Look, how simple is to make it. Straight inside the bread crumb, turn them around a couple of times. Once you've done it, you start to fry. Simple. Yeah, nothing at all. Now, because I have to double bread it, you put a little bit of Truffle butter, if you don't have it, doesn't matter. Some nice cheese, just on top, cover almost everywhere. Some nice slice of a prosciutto. 
Mm. <laughs> and then again, come on, other two. Make sure you cover it properly. Yes. On top. Then again, you put them in the egg. Okay, put them in a breadcrumb. Cover it properly. At this stage, because to save in time, I made just one here. You can see, cover up. Turn the other side, you fry it in one side. Ah. <laughs> look at that. Ooh, look at that. It's good. Come on, guess, guess, guess. Then you get one nice egg. Look at that. Come here, here. come have a look. Straight away. Little salt. Cook for just a few minutes, put it back. Gosh, my hands, my God, this is so quick. <laughs> I can't believe it. Make sure you cook them in properly. The gas is a little bit low, but doesn't matter. <sighs> nice eggs. Hello, big boy. Look what I'm doing. Beautiful. Do you want a few more minutes? Do you want me to go over and do another little fat with V sauce so you can sort yeah, this yeah, out? Yeah, 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 go on. Okay, so this needs a few more minutes cooking. God bless the camping stoves. We love it. Uh, <laughs> Mike from V sauce, let's hit up some more food facts, man. I need Janora's help on this one. Okay. There's a type of pasta, and, and, and how do I pronounce this name? Struzza pate? Jinna. Yes. Kifai. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a type no, no. of pasta. Say it again. Strozza pete. Strozza prete. It's strangled priest. The priest eats too much pasta. He went strangled. He went, oh, because he loved the tomat. It's a type of pasta that has the name that is literally a choking priest. Yes. You can just eat it. <laughs> it's that delicious. It chokes a priest. I love that. I love that. So someone's just sent that in. Uh, yes, oh, sorry, that came from at Pizza Rules. Nice. That guy okay. knows his Italian food. Okie dokie. How's, how's the burrito going? Two words. Brain food. Brain food. Okay. Well, there is some good stuff in it. Very, very nice. Really good Why stuff. Why would you call it brain food? Because these nutrients are going into my brain. So, I guess in that way, like, all it's food brain is brain food. food. Well, there's lots of good stuff. <laughs> Veggies. Not everything can pass through their blood-brain barrier. Absolutely. Let's be serious. Absolutely. Is well, it look. true that fish is good for your brain? We'll have to do a little bit of research. <laughs> that's, your, that's your pleasure, though, isn't it? I think a nice diversity of foods is what's good for the brain. And learning about your food. Definitely. Except that I can be dangerous. Ready. Uh, <laughs> this is the stuff! I am ready! Come along! <laughs> so, uh, what, what's going on, Gennaro? Tell Look me! Look at that! I'm ready! It's cooked, the milk, the cheese is melting inside. You can see it's all coming out from here. The prosciutto cover almost and everything. Then I put them on top of the plate. Then I've done this fantastic fried eggs. You can see it's not all, all cooked. So I put them on top. Then I grated some nice Parmesan cheese. I don't think the world will exist without Parmesan cheese. I grate on top. Okay. Yes, go. <laughs> but tell us about that, Chris. We ah, hold on a minute. And the truffle <laughs> goes in. Yeah! And this is turkey milanese with the fried eggs and with a lovely black truffle. If you don't have a truffle, don't worry. Just to do turkey milanese without the truffle. We'll test delicious. Yeah, come on! Yeah. I love it. Okay, well, there you go. You had it from Gennaro, the man himself, a beautiful turkey milanese, that beautiful cured meat, the scamozza cheese, the egg, the truffle. Does life get any better than that? I want to eat that. 
Oh, as soon as I'm out of here, I'm over there eating them. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. So look, here we are. Hugh, um, you're a farmer. You've worked with animals a long, long time. Uh, this is an opportunity for us guys uh, to really talk about welfare. And it might seem weird for some people that we're cooking over here, turkey dishes. And then over here, the lovely Mike from Paul Kelly's uh, farm uh, has brought some live turkeys. Um, but Hugh, I mean, it's, it's, this is the time of year when some of the turkeys have come from a nice place yeah. and some yeah. haven't. I'm um, afraid that's true. I mean, it, this is a time of year where if you're going to push the boat out for the whole family and cook something fantastic, then really look for a bird that's lived well. I mean, look at these guys. You could say they're a bit brave to have turned up here today, but they've got everything they need. They've yep. got feed, water, room to move around, and actually the, these are outdoor reared birds. It's yep. why they've got such good colour in their plumage and in their lovely purpley gobbly faces. Uh, they're happy, contented birds, and I'm, I'm always feel better to tuck into food if I know the animals well, live I, I well. I agree. I mean, I, I, I really admire vegetarians for not eating meat. Bless them. And, it, and if I could do it, I would do it. But, you know, if you are a meat eater, I think, first up, you know, quality rather than quantity yeah. is a big thing. But what can we say to the guys back home about, you know, some people say, well, if you're going to eat it, who cares what life it's had? But it, for, for us foodies, it matters, doesn't it? I mean, how does it affect the flavour and all of those kind of things? Well, I think the first thing is it's a, a fundamental principle. There is no meat without taking the life of an animal. So let's make sure that life is a good life. And what we mean by that is that it's, it's lived well, it's been able to express all its natural behaviour patterns, it's been able to feed how it wants to feed, it's been able to move around. And if we can allow it to fulfil in its short life those basic wants and needs, I think we can feel a lot better about tucking in. But also flavour-wise... As, as you say, you're absolutely right, Free-range bird tastes better, it's been out on the grass, it's nibbled some bugs and grubs, and it's been shown that there are actually more, there are actually higher levels of omega-3 fatty acids in free-range birds that have lived longer. Because they've eaten on those little bugs. They, because they've eaten that, they've pecked the grass and the grubs and the bugs, they've grown much more slowly. One of the nice things about turkey, one of the reasons a good one is a very full-flavoured bird, is because it takes five to six months to grow, mm -hmm. as opposed to five to six weeks for an intensively reared chicken. Oh, that's a massive so difference. So an outdoor reared turkey really does have a, have a good life and then it tastes all the better for it. Well, look, it's, it, we're in a recession. I think this is a time where, you know, even if you look at the waste side of things, it, it might be well worth upgrading the turkey and sharing it, you know, and, and really right. making get, get, use of all... Get a smaller bird and use every bit of it. You don't need a 30-pound monster on the table. Uh, get a, a smaller bird... 12 to 14 pounds of free range bird. It will cost a bit, but that's, that is the heart of your celebration. So if you want to feel good about your food this Christmas, put a really good turkey nice on the one. table. Well, look, I think we might as well ask Michael some killer little food facts about turkeys. I bet you've got something up your sleeve. Well, here's the thing. We're in the UK right now. The UK during Christmas eats 10 million of these guys. Okay. But hold on, America, where I'm from, during Thanksgiving, eat 60 million of these 60 birds. Million. They're Six not all going to be happy million. birds at that rate, Not all they? of them, but maybe one day they will all be happy. That would be good. Also, we're looking at three male turkeys. Toms? Is that the right word for a male? Stag. A stag. Stag. Nice. 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 I didn't know this until today, but apparently, and correct me if I'm wrong, because we're still trying to suss this out, apparently you can tell the gender of a bird by looking at its poop. I believe that's true. I don't know. Mike, Mike <laughs> is not quite sure, but go for it. I'm sure. This is right. what I've been reading on the Turkey Lover forums. Apparently, <laughs> just, a, <laughs> just, just a minute. The turkey Lover forum. You brought the whole tone of this. The, the turkey <laughs> Lover forum. Yeah, it's going in some scary directions now. <laughs> what I'm saying here, here's what I've heard. And they're particularly the female, interested in the poo. <laughs> the female turkey, which is called the hen. the hen, she has a special muscle to hold in fecal matter longer, so it doesn't get spread in a nest. I know the right? feeling. Yes. <laughs> the so, males so she don't. Can, so she doesn't mess up her eggs, you see. Uh, oh. So tidy mum doesn't want to get it's mucky nice. eggs. So but it's good. while all that matter sits inside the turkey, it becomes more and more soft. So when the females defecate, it's a mess. But the males, they've got drier, nice, snake-shaped logs. Wow. <laughs> and okay. don't say... Don't say that we don't give you good quality content on FoodTube. Now, there was another little fact that you gave us about um, the, the eagle and the national sort of uh, oh, icon yeah. of, of America. Give it yeah, to us. Yeah, so Benjamin Franklin wanted the turkey to be the national bird for the United States. Of course, we went with the bald eagle. But if he had gotten his way, 
the U.S. would not have been eating these guys. Right, because he couldn't uh, have eaten. The they would have been no. amazing symbols of America rather than just delicious symbols. You still symbols. have wild turkeys in America, which we don't have in the U.K. Yeah. And they can fly at up to 50, 60 miles an hour. That's right. I don't think you get that speed out of one of those unless you put it in a catapult. No. No, wow. Well, there you go. 89 Thank kilometers per hour, by 80, the way. Yeah. Okay, so that's, yeah. 50 kilom that's 50 miles an hour in, in English money. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go, guys. Uh, that was a little opportunity just to sort of get your head around some of the welfare and ethics uh, of this beautiful, incredible animal. Uh, next, we're on to another turkey treat. Yes, guys, it's time to give you a little teaser of that thing called the, dun, 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 the turkey twizzler. I've got a little video for you. Turkey Twizzlers. They're only like 30% turkey, so the prospects of what else is in them isn't particularly good. Do you eat them? No, I don't even know what they taste of. No, <laughs> horrible. The kids in England today know what a turkey Twizzler is more than a chicken breast. I think I've got my work cut out here. I think you have. <laughs> <laughs> so, lovely people, um, this is an opportunity for myself, Jamie Oliver, uh, and the one and only Hugh Fernley Whittenstall to give you a little masterclass uh, in some of the sort of objectives of the perfect turkey carve. How many times, guys, have you been through Christmas when someone's sitting there hacking a turkey up, don't really know what they're doing? Well, this is an opportunity. There's two ways. That certainly I can think of doing it at the moment. Uh, Hugh, um, do you want to give them the first style of, of yeah. breaking down the turkey? I'm, I'm sort of going to go for the old-fashioned route, which is really about lovely thin slices of turkey off the breast. This is the kind of way your, your granddad might have served it in the good old days. And uh, obviously the first slice there, nice crispy bit of skin. Gorgeous. And we'll just lay that down there. You're cutting at a slight angle so you expose the grain of the meat. Look at that really nice. Is. It's beautiful turkey, beautifully cooked, Jamie. So this you've done this, a good job here. This first part of carving. Um, so you want to ideally, you, everyone gets a little bit of skin as but well. But it's kind of about showing off, isn't it? It's at yeah. the end of the table. It um, is, and and you know what? It takes all day as well. It, you know, it's good. It's a lovely tradition. And there's one very important thing actually. You should never really start carving a turkey until you've had a good glug of wine. That that relaxes the carving muscles, Jamie. Did you know that? <laughs> I actually believe you. Which I is, do believe <coughs> which you. Which is why my next slice is going to be better than the first three. So um, what, I, what I think is interesting about this is when you order your turkey from the butcher, you can request for him to remove the wishbone. And that's the little bone at the back here, just where Hugh's finger is, uh, that would kind of stop you having that lovely follow-through motion. Then, then you wouldn't get to make a wish, would you? Which would be a shame. Or do well, you think you could you take can it still, away? You can still just keep it yeah. up there and yank So then it out. you'd even... I would... I think what you're going to do in a minute, which I would do, is take the leg off. But old style, you even carve little slices of the dark meat. That's what my dad does at Christmas. He says, uh, le leg or breast, who wants what? And Because the legs are so big, you can actually cut quite nice slices off. They're beautiful. I must say, I'm a dark meat person myself. I love that extra flavour you get. It is denser, it is richer. It's a muscle that's done a bit more work mm -hmm. and, uh, and has got a bit more flavour developed in it. So, so that's, that's the, the, the old-fashioned way. Yeah. Okay, well look, this is really exciting because, you know, I think what Hugh's displayed is kind of the flamboyance and the ritual of carving this beautiful, beautiful bird. Um, I'm going to take a slightly different view, okay? So I'm going to take my other bird here. Um, and this, this is not as glamorous. This, I would suggest, happens in the kitchen uh, while your guests are outside but in another place. But this is going to be effective. And it's going to be efficient. Is that the order of the day? Ab absolutely. Um, what do you want me to move? Someone wants me to move something. Wine bottle. Oh, wine bottle. God bless you. I'm sure your, your guys can do that. Um, move it in my direction. That's okay. Yes, there's, there's the wine, Hugh. Um, Lovely. So, guys, there's a second style. It's not as glamorous as the first style uh, that Hugh did beautifully. Um, remove the wing first. And then just cut in between the leg and remove the leg like this. And just pull it away from the bone like that. Um, then what I want to do, and this is very simple, even if you're a kind of novice cook, down here is a little spine, okay? And I just want to run my knife down there and all the way to the bottom. And what we can do, using our knife and our hands actually, is just pull that big breast 
off the bone. Now, if you're a, a kind of beginner and you're worried about it, please don't worry. It will kind of sort itself out. If you yeah. kind of have a little bit of leftover here, please don't worry about that either because that's your leftovers. And you just remove that breast from the turkey, put that on a board, and then you've got something that you guys can really work with, okay? And I can see, look at how happy DJ Barbecue is. He's, he's inspired right now. Um, Meat. Uh, we're just going <laughs> to... Notice this is so much simpler to sort of just rattle your knife through this meat like that. You can do it all in one hit. You can kind of portion control it just that little bit more. But the other thing that's really good about that, Jamie, is actually if you slice too thin, the meat dries out quickly. But your nice chunky slices, they will stay moist a little bit longer. Well, that's right, because it's going to be nice and juicy. The juicier breast is sort of nearer to the uh, carcass. So everybody um, gets that, whereas the old fashioned way, the outside breast will be a little bit dry. So I like the way you've done it. So we can just rattle through this. Um, mm. Another thing is, Get yourself a sharp knife, okay? And there's going to be a whole bunch of kind of sharpening knife skills videos on FoodTube, so look out for those later. But on a nice platter, very quickly, we can get our knife in, we can get it under the bird, we can pick it up, and we can just basically fan out that beautiful meat. And then all I would do from this point onwards is just get that leg meat and pull it with two forks or your hands and just and chop it up and have it like beautiful pork. You can carve it still if you want, but I like to just to hack it off the bone. So there you go. Two styles of carving your beautiful turkey at Christmas. One is a little bit more showy. The other one is kind of a little bit more efficient. And of course, Good don't job. forget, guys, uh, we have also got those lovely leftovers that we'll be celebrating. So there you go. Thank you, Hugh, nice uh, job, for doing your styling, which I love very much. And there is the other styley. Okay, what are we doing next? We are doing the perfect thing to go with turkey. Um, Hugh, this is a lovely opportunity to talk about what you've been up to for the last year, because you've written your new book. Fruit. I have, I've written the River Cottage Fruit Book, and I've been putting fruit in almost everything. And the thing I think about fruit is that, well, we all know it's a great food, we all know it's very good for us, but we're a little bit unadventurous with it in the kitchen. We make some lovely fruity puddings. If we're feeling virtuous, we take an apple from the fruit bowl and we have a munch. But actually, fruit in savoury dishes, in salads, in stews, we can fling it all over the place. And it, it, it rarely is anything other than a pleasure to find a little bit of fruit sneaking into a dish. So what I want to do now is... I'm going to be your commie today. So, fantastic. Will so feel start, free to tell the guys at home with Paul over there. Um, I've got some parboiled potatoes. So we're starting off with exactly how you'd start your classic roasties to go with your roast turkey or any other roast meat. So we're going to shake them into the tray. But so Jamie, these have been peeled, chopped, peeled, up. chopped, parboiled, just four minutes or so. Okey if you could give me those carrots back in lovely big chunks. Yeah. What I like about this dish, it takes three, it takes four of the of like this? nice big chunks like that. Okay. Well, it takes three of the homiest, easiest veg we have all around all the time: carrots, onions, and potatoes. Lots of us have them in the kitchen all the time. One thing we're going to add to that is one of our favourite fruits, the apple. So you've got something that you've probably already got in the house, four things, spuds, onions, carrots, and apples. And we're going to roast them all together. So the onions have been peeled, but they're still joined at the root and the tip. And I'm going to cut them into long quarters. If they were bigger, I might cut them into eights. But the point about cutting them lengthways is they, you see this little bit here? They stay joined, and they won't fall apart as long as you keep that little uh, rooty tip. Yeah, and we're just hold it together. It will, and we're just flinging them all here. And now we've got the carrots and the spuds and the onions. We're going to start doing the apples. And I want to keep the skin on, Jamie. Yeah. And again, chunky apple quarters. Everything yep. roughly the same Beautiful. size. Well, you know what I love about this? Because, you know, everyone loves a roast potato, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, like, the roast potatoes are, like, the best thing in the whole wide world. Uh, but also, the other thing is, is normally when you're doing a lovely uh, roast, of course, unless you're a vegetarian, uh, there's meat. And what I love about what Hugh's saying is like using pears, using apples, quinces, all sorts of fruits. You could put pears in this. It's going to cut through that meat in a beautiful way, isn't it? I think that's right. And we know, you know, people have cranberry sauce with the turkey, but you can, you can have that as well, or you can have this instead. And I want nice quarters. Of, this is a, a, not a, it's not a cooking apple. It's a nice cox. It's all these apples from my own orchard at home. So nice chunky pieces, maybe quarters, or if they're big like that, cut them in half again nice. and scatter them through the dish. And I know you've got two varieties here as well. Well, uh, do you know what? This is, this is a cox, and I've got these little guys here from an old tree that was already at the farmhouse when I moved in. And I don't know what it is, so I've sent it off. 
to the Brogdale Research Institute this year, and pretty soon they should be coming back to me. All I know about it is... Do you know what I'd love? If, if, if I saw that letter come through from Hugh, <laughs> right? Here, guys, uh, Hugh Fernley went to... <laughs> he sent us in this apple. Let's wind him up. Yeah, they say it's a parsnip. Go on, say it's a parsnip. <laughs> no, 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 go on. Tell him it's a pumpkin. Go on. I mean, do... That may well happen. That may well happen. <laughs> but meanwhile, have a bite of that. Is that not a, a feisty, delicious apple? Mmm. Mm. A little bit of crunch, a little bit of fizz. I mean, what, what's really interesting is all of our fruit, pretty much, and many of our vegetables, pretty much, have kind of been edited by commercial farming and supermarkets over the last Yeah, they've 30, lost a bit of years. character, haven't they? And the reason they've been edited is because they've gone for the ones that have the highest sugar, or the ones that look the prettiest, or the ones that travel the best. I mean, just look at the carrot here. A nice, filthy, dirty old carrot. Of That's course. a Devon carrot, came all the way with me from Devon. And it, it, the big ones have the best flavour, it's full of flavour that. Well, let's, let's talk about what are you going to do now? Now we've got the fruit, the, the carrots, well, we've the got onion and everything the potatoes in, in here, so what are we going to do? Well, a good slosh of rapeseed oil, that's a good one because you can heat it up to quite a high temperature yep. and it's got a nice flavour. And this so is a British oil because obviously it is, we it do is. like some olive oil. But this yeah, is but I, I've been a big champion of rapeseed oil because it's got a, a, a mild but quite sweet grassy flavour. Yeah. Um, good sprinkling of salt. Okie dokie. You can do the same with the pepper. And then just to give it an extra lift, a bit of thyme. And I'm just going to tear some thyme leaves up Ooh. and fling them about. Now, that wants to go into a hot oven, maybe yeah. about 190 uh, for 45 minutes. Yeah. And maybe it take it out. Give it a good shake give now. It a shake give it a up. shake now to get the oil around it. Take it out halfway through and give it a really good tumble, but possibly not with your bare hands like that, because it'll be very hot at that point. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, uh, but, but we don't, that's all right. So, so I that's can, absolutely I bang on, ready to go in the oven. Look at all those colours now. Beautiful. Autumn. The orange, the red of the apple, it already looks sensational. I'm betting when it comes out of the oven, it's going to be all crispy and caramelised yes. and brown, and then you'll just well, want to dive Carrie in. Carrie Ann, if you can bring the, the, the old for the new, that would be wicked, or the new for the old. Um, here we go, everyone. Round of applause for the beautiful... Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Nice. What do you think, Carrie Ann? So, just get, have a little sniff of that, Carrie Ann. What sort of flavours are you getting coming off there? Mm, the roast potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and do you get a bit of that oniony scent as well? Yeah, and the I time. can smell the apples as well. So what I want you to do is, is take... The, the, not too hot. Take it just so you get the... It sounds like an odd combination, but a little bit of little bit of apple and a little bit of potato in the same mouthful. And Jamie, maybe a bit Who of would onion. Like one of these? Yeah, Ooh. we should oh. pass them around. We got our youngest food tuber here today, guys. What's your name? No. Lauren. Now this is a little bit hot, so you might have to just sort of like you know, don't burn yourself. But please, if you, please if you don't do burn it. Just, just don't scald Lauren. Will you? Don't no. scald her. <laughs> okay, let's do another one. There was just another the hungry. Who'd like person. to try a, a little bit of apple and a little bit of onion in the same mouthful? It's hot, sweetheart. The really lovely thing about this dish is every <laughs> mouthful is different. Sometimes you've got apple and potato, the next minute you've got onion and carrot, then you've got three, and then yeah, one mouthful you've got four. What do you think? Right. Really good. I'm going to do one. Um, over here we've got the lovely Gemma, who's been doing amazing stuff on Food Tube for cakes, cake making, all the skills. We love you, Gem. You're great. Um, I'm going to do a special one for her. The special one for her is this. Get the roast potato and squash it. Yeah. And th this, is, this is the way that we like our stuff, dirty. And um, <laughs> we're going to take... You're doing a dirty roast apple. And then I'm, I'm, I'm going to do a dirty... Don't worry about a dirty burger. A little bit of turkey on there as well, because, of course, that, the meat's also what it's about. OK. A little, little bit, bit of brown of meat or crispy skin. Do you do brown meat? Do you do brown meat? Yeah. Bit of crispy okay. skin. Thank you. But um, we love Gemma. Like She's an done. Amuse it is an amuse bouche of oh. roasted varge. Um, <laughs> very, very nice. Let's see how amused you are. It's really hot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's hot like delicious. If you want to check out uh, more of Gemma's videos, crack on, have a look at FoodTube. Uh, She's done some amazing stuff and lots of more beautiful stuff to come. So we're going to go back to the man, the man that knows many things, the one and only Michael from Vsauce. Where are you? You're over right here. here. Hey. hey, Jamie. Great question came in from Guy Larson, at Guy Lar. I've always wondered this. He says, in outer space, does water boil or freeze? Does it boil from a lack of pressure or freeze because it's freaking outer space? What do you think? What do you I'd guys say think? Freeze. 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 Boil. Freeze. 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 Guess what, everyone? Close. I'm from America, where everyone's a winner. In fact, <laughs> everyone's a winner because it does both. In outer space, liquid water. <laughs> at the, well, not at the same time. 
in space, liquid water immediately boils off. It vaporizes, and then it crystallizes into a sort of outer space snow. It's very pretty. What also is pretty are black lights, ultraviolet lights. We've got a huge one down here. They make white things like your teeth and your shoelaces glow because those items absorb the ultraviolet light and reflect it in a way that we can see as visible light. But here's a neat trick with tonic water. Tonic water contains quinine or quinine. Quinine. Quinine, quinine as you might also say. Quinina. Quinina, which is a wonderful fluorescing compound. Watch what happens. This is a glass of regular tap water. And when I turn on the black light, boring. We see a few purples, but that's just the, the, the long, or rather the short wavelengths. But there's a lot of ultraviolet energy coming off of this bulb. And watch what happens when I take our tonic water, brand new bottle, and I'm gonna pour this on in and watch it mix and absorb and fluoresce. So there's the tonic. Ooh! Yeah, so the quinine in the, the quinine, or the quinine. The turkey. The, that's how the turkeys say it. Either way, its chemical properties are always the same. It absorbs ultraviolet and then sends it out as visible glowing light. It's a great way to make jellies or jello that glow or cocktails that glow under black light. Some fun examples. Also, just drinking it and then looking in your mouth under a black light is really scary and cool. There's a food fact for you. Hey, my, my, listen, listen, dude. Um, what? Enough facts, man. It is time for the battle, okay, bro? Battles can be educational, too. Dude, no, we just got a battle, man. Let's do this, man. All right. Let's do this. All right. <laughs> Okay, okay, boys and girls. So, back in 2005, um, there was a big fight, and uh, Oliver won. Oliver won the battle uh, because I was trying to clean up school lunches. Uh, but actually, there was one thing that became kind of famous uh, in, in part of the problems um, to uh, feeding our, our lovely people. I found that when we went into schools, there was loads of really highly processed foods uh, that didn't quite have as much as what we thought should be in it. In it. Um, and, you know, we kind of found these things called turkey twizzlers. Uh, I had nothing against the company that made them personally. I just had a problem with this kind of food because I thought we should be feeding our kids food that didn't have loads and loads of stuff in. So uh, we have like a kind of list over here, I believe, of all the food, the ingredients of what was in turkey twizzlers. So look, look, I mean, just look, look at the list of this, guys. You know, um, so here was my point, guys. Here's my point. When the kids come to school, you kind of want to do your veggies, maybe some potatoes or something, and some meat or some fish. Uh, and there were these kind of products full of all of these things, E numbers, anti antioxidants. We think there was only about a third, 40%, probably less, of actual meat. Uh, I'm sure at the time uh, there was added fat and all sorts of bits and pieces like that. So anyway, that was then. A lot's changed. They tried to reformulate it. Um, but ever since then, kids, all around Britain hate me from school. Bring back uh, my turkey twizzlers. Let's have a little look here. We've got um, Ginger Pwick, which sounds a little bit wrong, um, uh, said, I wish they still sold turkey twizzlers. Sad face. Um, we've got <laughs> Millie Riley, bring back turkey twizzlers. Uh, and then got, and there's another one, Byron um, at Jaxi Smith, fourth. Um, All I want in life is for turkey twizzlers to make a comeback. And then another person said, uh, this is Fabric Live 39. Uh, my school lunches were never the same. You can shove your couscous up your ass. <laughs> um, so basically, and by the way, everyone, these were the most polite ones. I got, so, on a weekly basis, I get loads and loads of grief. So here's the thing. We're going to have the battle off of the Twerky Twizzler. Um, at FoodTube, we like to listen to your comments and we like to come back to you. Uh, so we're kind of meeting our old nemesis of seven years ago. 40 plus, I'm sure, ingredients. Um, it's, it's that versus the turkey twirl, ladies and gentlemen. 
Now, um, me and Hugh have had a long chat about this, and, 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 and it's revolutionary what we've come up with. It's revolutionary, because my turkey twirl has one ingredient. One ingredient. So, um, what do you want? It's, oh, yes, let's uh, turn it around, DJ Barbecue. Yeah! <laughs> one ingredient. Okay, so what we've done here, guys, is we've taken, you can do this, your butcher can do this. Uh, you just go to a butcher, you get him to slice a turkey breast, or actually you could use any poultry, again, uh, slice it a centimetre thick, and then all you want to do is literally cut it a centimetre away. I don't know if you can see that where you are. And all I do is simply rotate this breast as I'm cutting. Now, I guess the point is, is um, of course I'm having a little bit of fun with this little segment right now, but I do think all around the world, you know, how we feed our kids at school 180, 190 days of the year, you know, is it okay to give them kind of junk food every single day in that place where they're supposed to learn and you feed their brain? I think, I think it's important. And I think, yeah, I, think, yeah. I think you all agree, don't you? It's, yeah. it's, it's really important. Um, so I've got this revolutionary thing where our turkey twirl will have just turkey in it. Now, turkey um, is, a, is a wonderful meat um, and it can have a beautiful balance of good quality fats and, 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 and lovely lean meat as well. Um, so people do favour it uh, in some respects. Notice all I'm doing here is just literally moving the breast around a centimetre thick, and the technique for this does not require uh, a 100 million pound machine that creates a paste of multiple ingredients uh, uh, and then kind of splurges it back together and creates these things. Uh, all we're going to do is go old school, get a little kebab stick, and um, we're going to twirl our turkey. Now, no, I'm, not, I'm not doing this just for a laugh. I mean, if, if you're trying to do something different, kebabs are real fun. Um, I'm just going to get this turkey and simply twirl it around my skewer. So, Q, would you mind helping me with my twirl? That would be a pleasure. Okay, DJ B, would you mind helping Q with yeah. his twirl? Um, all I'm going to do, guys, is take the end yep. uh, and simply uh, take it to the end uh, and just rotate it and rotate it and keep it going and do your thing while I have another little yap. How so hard can it be? It, it, well, it's, it's this hard. Actually, it's um, quite hard because it keeps slipping around, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> no, you've got it. Look, you've I'm got allowed it. to do it. Is that a twirl? I think that's the best Ooh. way to do it. Ooh. 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 Well, Ooh. I know, but we can, we, can slip, we can slip it up that end. So, I've just washed my right hands. Through. Health health police, I have washed my hands. We're I am no longer with raw turkey hands. Um, so, uh, you can see what he's doing. He's twirling his turkey. Um, it's a miracle. Uh, he has one ingredient in his product. Are uh, you allowed to season it a little bit, James? Okay, it's I'm going to add two ingredients. Uh, that is a little bit Ooh, of good. sea salt. Okay, like yeah. so what you can do then, and maybe a little olive oil if you want, uh, all we're going to do is simply put them on a barbecue, DJ barbecue, <laughs> but we can't do that now, uh, or put it under a hot grill. So under the hot grill here, Tom. oh by the way, once you've done these, if you want them to kind of, here's the thing, they're good to go straight away, but if you want them to kind of set in their shape and kind of hang like the originals did, um, put them in the fridge just for an hour. They kind of set for some reason, and then we're going to grill them. Uh, so let's have a little look at the one that we've done here. We've given it temperature, hard and fast. Ooh. Uh, Ooh. Uh, Ooh. At this stage in the game, you know, you could glaze it. You could glaze it with a barbecue sauce. You could. Uh, you could. Red currant uh, jelly. Red currant jelly. Ooh, Worcester nice. sauce. A little Worcestershire Worcester sauce. Mustard. A little honey, possibly. Nice idea. Um, so let's just see. Let's have a little drizzle up. Let's see if we can get the, let's get the picture back. Is the picture behind you guys? Let's, let's see if we've got the original picture. Let's see if we can get close um, to the original Turkey Twizzler. Okay, here we go. So, here's the first. So, DJ B, you hold this, son. Okay. Let's get a fork. You hold this. Um, so, so, we're going to take it off the skewer. Yeah, and we're gonna, we, want it, we want it to hang like the original. Okay. So, let's just get the fork and let's see if we can beat the original. Okay. The pressure is, I can have some kind of ooh, drum roll in the house. Ooh, ooh. I'm, I'm nervous, I'm feeling it. Yes! Yeah! 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 And he is victorious. Now, now guys, guys from around the world, you may have never had a turkey twizzler before, so you might be thinking, what on earth is Jamie Oliver doing? <laughs> Wrapping to, but actually, what we've done is a basic kebab here. We've actually, what have we gained? I know it's a bit of a laugh, but what we've gained here is we, by wrapping it, have gained texture and, yeah. and color. 
all those things that Hugh said about the mustard Worcestershire sauce, glazes, you know, barbecue sauce from DJB. Um, this is a beautiful way to treat any poultry uh, and a little bit interesting. So there you go. Very nice. So look, guys, I think for all of our audience here, let's get some food together. Let's head over there and let's eat some beautiful food. Come on, Very guys. well with the roast veg. Very, very good. Should we hit it with a little bit of lemon juice? I'm going to just do it. Have a tuck in, guys. Squeeze a lemon. A little bit of lemon. No olive oil. Very much. Okay, I'm bringing mine in. I'm coming over to carry in. So she's got all the meat. Very, very nice. Well, obviously, I love me. <laughs> Put a bottle of red wine. Nice. You know me so well. Okay. Oh, what's this? Okay, these are our barbecue turkey legs. Oh, hang out, guys. Don't be polite. Tuck in. So I get in here, guys. Hi, everybody. Loads of plates. So. Oh. Truffles. Oops, sorry, dude. Yeah, man. I want to know what DJ barbecue is called. A couple of spoons, turkey legs with barbecue sauce from Planet Dan. Cornbread. Cornbread with jalapenos nice. and cheese. Oh, dude. beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So there you go, on, guys. guys. Uh, thank you for coming to FoodTube Live the fourth time. Uh, it's been a really, really good laugh. We've had Gennaro Contaldo doing his beautiful yeah. turkey. <laughs> turkey Milanese. Yeah. We've had some beautiful cooking uh, from the wonderful Hugh Fernley Whittenstall, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Me and Carrie Ann, well, we had a nice little cook together uh, doing the cook along. So thank you to all of you guys that cooked along and thank you to our sponsors. We couldn't do it without you. The wonderful Uncle Ben's, thank you very much. We appreciate that. Uh, also, also, we had DJ Barbecue cooking those beautiful turkey legs. Come on, baby. Really, really good. So look, there's loads of really exciting things happening on FoodTube. Uh, please, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you want to share it, share, share it on your social media and get beautiful home-cooked food to all of your friends. Uh, I want to do a massive thank you to one of our collaborators. That is Sing, the one and only Michael from Vsauce. Yes. Oh, yes. Thank you. Uh, eating this radioactive banana. Uh, and, and again, if you haven't followed him, please check him out. Brilliant channel, loads of great info. Stuff that makes you chuckle, stuff that makes you go, wow, really, really cool. So there you go, guys. Thank all of you for coming. Really appreciate it. That's it from me. Over and out from now. Take care, guys. Until next time. Bye.